Welcome everybody to a lecture culture series with Yannick von Dorn. Today we're in lecture number six on pyramid energy, a very, very exciting lecture. So we're so happy to see you. Yannick, welcome. Yes, uh, welcome Angela, welcome to all the participants to this lecture. Um, so I'm very grateful uh, to, to do all those lectures about electroculture and to see so much enthusiasm and motivation. Uh, today, uh, I saw a real evolution since uh, 20 years and since 10 years or more, a little bit more than 10 years that I speak about the pyramids. It's, it's really, it's, it is really a kind of revival about how they work and how we can use them and to, and i'm very pleased and happy to see the results uh, that you all share with me and in the different uh, groups so um i will share some results like this uh, today and uh, and will explain you uh, uh how they work my viewpoints on this and also some signs uh, not so much signs today but some basics and um and uh and 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 first uh and how to use it in our gardens and fields huh? because that's the main point of this uh, electroculture lecture about pyramid energy so let's begin <laughs> um so we will see again uh, history, scientific notions, working principles, how to apply pyramids, and some testimonials. About the scientific notions, we will see that the pyramid is like a synthesis of all the other techniques we have seen before. We all the the effects of uh, the atmospheric antenna, the magnetic antenna, the, the Igina spirals, uh, the Lakovsky coil, you, you can find them all back in the use of the pyramid. So it's really a, 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 a synthesis. And that's why I speak about the pyramids at the end of the, of the lectures, because if I would speak about it in the beginning, uh, then we would uh, uh, understand a lot less about the whole uh, the whole picture of the pyramids. And uh, most people uh, don't know uh, about this. And, and uh, there is not really a book that make a synthesis of, of, all, the, of all what we will see now. Uh, there are a lot of books, uh, but uh, not a book that makes really a synthesis of, of this. But it comes. <laughs> it will come. Um, so how I begin with pyramids, it was um, when I was student in the 90s, I, I was uh, like a lot of people interested in the, in the mysteries of, around pyramids. And so I read books uh, about this about the archaeology and the mysteries but uh, I, I, I was not aware about the effects on plants at that time and it's only uh, like 10 years after in uh, 2011 I did a lecture about electroculture at the Canadian National Convention of Organic Farming in Toronto and so it's in your region <laughs> and um and there so it was at 20 on 28 january 2011 i think i did also in 2012 or 2010 something like this i i did it two times but the first time i went there i, I discovered uh by talking with uh, different people and farmers uh that uh, uh there was uh, less brown in Toronto or close to Toronto in Bancroft um, in 1978 that wrote a little book uh, the pyramid and it's about the effects of the pyramid on plant growth so it was really the the topic that uh, uh, motivated me to to know more about it and to begin to experiment with it and um, and then I discovered also that there was another guy, uh, and his name is Gilbert Milne, and he 
had a company that was called, uh, in, also in Toronto, that was called Pyramid Electroculture Company or Electroculture Pyramid Company. So really uh, uh, interesting because I was there in Guelph to do a presentation about uh, electroculture. And then I discovered there was a guy before me <laughs> to, to speak about electroculture and pyramids. And so uh, it, it motivated me even more. It was like a sign to, to go more in, in depth in the research about pyramids. And uh, an, another sign was in my personal life that stimulated me was that I discovered also that they did some research in Guelph at the University of Guelph itself about the effects of pyramids in 1976 and 77. So, and this is also my birth year. So it's really a lot of science that uh, pushes me to, uh, to, uh, to do more research on it. So as soon as I was back at home, I, be I began to build uh, little pyramids and to experiment with it. Yeah. And the same year, another sign really crazy. <laughs> Uh, there was on 28 uh, May, so it's my birthday, there was a crop circle uh, uh, appearing in England uh, that you see on the white. And you see different circles. And in the middle, you see like two pyramids or two triangles uh, with a ball on top. We will also uh, look at the sign and the explanation of this, or we will try to understand this, because it's really uh, a sign. Huh? Um, I don't care about, uh, it's another topic to know if uh, crop circles are made uh, by people or by uh, um, mysterious energies or whatever, That that's not uh, the topic I want to speak about now, but it's it's really a sign, it's, it's, it's the synchronicity. Huh? The people that did the crop circle, they don't know me, or the, the mysterious energies, maybe, I don't know, but, but in my personal life, it was like a sign. And so um, I spoke about this crop circle with, uh, with uh, uh, the author of the book, uh, uh, Pyramid Energy, the signs of, uh, uh, the philosophy of God, the science of man, or something like this. And she is called Mary Hardy that wrote that book. And I met her in, uh, in northern, uh, in, in the USA at, uh, at the Dowsing Convention. It was also around 2011. And, um, and she told me, ah, there's for sure probably uh, a message to you and she was saying to me it's like uh, she was feeling that it's about transforming bad energies in positive energies so and that i i had to understand or i had to search or or or, or find out how to transform uh, negative energies in positive energies and uh, so uh, uh, another uh, clue or another <laughs> key in my research. And, uh, and so I continue to, to, to work on that. Every, every year I discover a little bit more about the significance, uh, the significations of the, this crop circle, but uh, I didn't understand everything, but uh, some things. <laughs> and so we will see this too. This is a picture of Gilbert Milne in Toronto uh, that you can find in old articles in alternative magazines or in newspapers from that time. You see him uh, uh, on, on the bottom with a, a big pyramid he built in his garden. And at the right, you see him with little pyramids that were made of copper rods, uh, probably. Uh, like uh, Les Brown. Uh, Les Brown and Gilbert Milne, probably they knew each other. Uh, I think so, because they lived at the same time and close to around Toronto or in Toronto. So uh, Toronto is a very big city. 
maybe they didn't know each other, but I, I think in that time uh, there were not two other people like this in the whole world. So <laughs> uh, there, it's it's like Toronto it has something to do with pyramids uh, for for the gardens and and Canada also uh, globally. And um, and so I began to do little pyramids like this, huh, the, like you see uh, in in copper rods. That were my first pyramids I made, like uh, like you see this. And so we will see the the effects of those pyramids. Huh. And uh, Gilbert Milne he distributed, uh, he made those pyramids and distributed them to help uh, plant growth and to 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 help. Uh, uh, also against diseases uh, uh, to, that that the plants uh, grow uh, healthy and 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 nice. So, um, if we look at the timeline, uh, at a, a broader picture about pyramids, well, we have in archaeology we find all those old pyramids all over the world, and the most famous are naturally those in Egypt. But uh, you have uh, pyramids uh, really all over the world, also in uh, in uh, Guatemala, in Mexico, in in Ecuador, in uh, in South America, a little bit everywhere. Also in uh, in Asia, in Indonesia, in China, even in France, there were pyramids in Bosnia, in ex Yugoslavia. Uh, really, you find uh, pyramids uh, almost all over the world. So it's very mysterious. And the pyramids are sometimes a little bit different all over the world, but uh, mainly they, they respect certain um, proportions and certain angles that we find all over the world. Uh, we will see that. Uh, maybe we, we will understand a little bit the why also. And uh, but we in archaeology, it's not really clear about the effects on plant growth. We don't find much um, uh, signs about the relation between agriculture and pyramids. But when we look in the world, if I think about it now, uh, well, they they all those pyramids are almost uh, in in a lot of countries and, and places where there was much agriculture, also in Egypt, uh, uh, close to the Nile River. Uh, and so there was a lot of agriculture. Um, and when we look further, then we have the work of Les Brown and Gilbert Milne in the, in the 1970s and 80s in, in Canada, and then uh, I speak about the effects of pyramids on plant growth. Huh? Uh, otherwise, the, the the research on the archaeology of pyramids is 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 old. Huh? It was uh, also in the in the 1600s, uh, 1700s, 1800s. Uh, but about the effects on plant growth, uh, it's mostly in the 70s. We find some books or papers about this. And then uh, the last years, like uh, since uh, 2000, uh, around 2010, that I began to to do experiments uh, with pyramids, um, that I I I, uh, sh I showed this uh, with testimonials, and that I began also to build and and distribute pyramids, and uh, in my workshops, and then also a lot of people that went to my workshops that begin also to do that. So for I speak about for the garden. So we will see this. So pyramid technology is used for multiple applications. Huh? So it's a very broadband technology, I would say. Huh? So you can use it to improve the garden, uh, to improve growing in the garden, uh, to improve harmony, uh, energy. So we can use it to energizing plants, to, to, to increase the energy of the plants, seeds, and the water also. Uh, it's also very famous to help to preserve food. So food will, will be able to preserve a lot longer uh, time in the pyramids or, or if it's uh, energized in the pyramid before. 
than, than without. Um, also against uh, radioactivity. Uh, there were certain experiments that shows or that indicates that uh, pyramid energy will transmute or will reduce half-life of, uh, of radioactive elements uh, in a very short time. Uh, there are radioactive elements that maybe reduce 50% uh, of their radioactivity in thousands of years. And sometimes in a pyramid, it will be like in two days or a few days. So it's very strange. Uh, uh, and Les Brown showed this too, that it helps to transmute elements. It's able to transmute atoms and other atoms. So it's it's really at a nuclear level that it, it has an influence too. Uh, and um, a pyramid can also be used to generate electricity. So there are now uh, even books uh, just uh, talking about this or different hypotheses. And there are also uh, people that did uh, experiments also like Les Brown uh, did also experiments like this that shows that you can make a huge amount of electricity with pyramid uh, structures. And also for health and well-being, there you have a lot of books uh, speaking about the effects for meditation, for healing, for uh, a lot of uh, therapists all over the world uh, organize uh, meditation courses or, or healing courses uh, in the midst. So it's it's uh, quite well known. Now. The topic that we will explore will be more how to use it in our gardens, but even if it's close, closely related to the other effects, um, uh, that's why I speak a little bit about them too. Uh, hmm. Now, if we look more at the fundamental effects of uh, pyramid energy, we have really a different kind of effects. And uh, this will explain also uh, the different uh, materials used, because some materials will increase more certain effects and, and decrease uh, other effects. So uh, uh, depending on the material, on the material you use to, to make a pyramid, uh, you, you, you can also influence the different effects. An example, it's well known that for meditation, mostly people like more uh, pyramid in wood, a wooden pyramid. Uh, now also other pyramids can, can be interesting uh, in other materials, but um, uh, in a wooden pyramid, it's a more, it's, it's a more relaxing energy. Um, in a, in a copper pyramid or, or metal pyramid, but now more precisely copper, it will, it will be a little less relaxing, but it will increase a lot more the energy. Uh, it will, so depending on the effects you want to, to get, uh, the material choice can also be interesting. Uh. Um, now for plant growth, it is shown in, in different uh, scientific studies. Uh, there was a scientific study in Texas, for example, uh, that you can find also on the internet if you search a little bit. Um, there, there was a scientific study in Texas that shows really uh, the different effects of, of uh, different materials. Like uh, it's a little bit like with Lakowski coils, where you have the best effect in copper, mostly, well, with pyramids too, you have the best effect with the copper. Um, that's also what Les Brown showed huh, uh, on plants that uh, he was always uh, telling and his book, uh, he, he, he tells this, that it works the best in copper. Now to come again to the fundamental effects. So there is one effect that I call harmonization. So it's like when you have different kinds of energies in your garden or, or, so, or, or wherever or, or from an organism, when it will go in a pyramid, 
it will help to harmonize all the all the different kind of energies that that are like assembled in 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 a, in a living organism or around um so it's it's like it brings more harmony between different energies between the different uh pieces of of a living organism or the, uh, the cells the organs the 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 um, the the energy flows so the that's a fun aspect a second aspect is energizing it's different than harmonizing yeah uh, energizing it's really that it will increase the energy it's like you increase the power right? it's like you increase uh, but it's a kind of life force energy it's like it will increase a life force or you can call it a uh, vital force or, uh, or or chi or organ or life energy and there are different uh, uh, terms you can use um, and this this explains also why food will preserve longer because uh, when uh, it has more uh, living energy then then it will not decay then the 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 the, the decay bacteria microorganism will, will not like it and will not uh, eat them or the slugs for example they, they will not eat the plants because they have more energy because they eat uh, plants that are in, in decay mode that are decaying it's like you have also uh, some uh, saints and priests and and sometimes uh, also in different religions uh, that sometimes when they die they have so much energy that even 20 years after when they they look at them their bodies the, the don't decay it's like they have so much life force that uh, the body don't decay when you have a rotting bacteria it's like your energy is 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 uh, is decreasing and then you attract and then you are transformed by bacteria, insects, uh, or whatever. But if your energy is high enough, it, it doesn't happen. Uh, it stays, it, it will just, then the body or the cells will just dehydrate, but it will not decay. And when it dehydrates, for example, an egg, Les Brown showed in his book an, uh, an, an experiment like this that everybody can do uh, quite easily. You take an egg, you open it on a plate, and normally after a few days, it will begin to rot and smell very badly. Uh, you don't like that in your home. <laughs> and uh, well, in, in, the, in the pyramid, it will not decay. It will just dehydrate and it will not, not smell. It will... And it will dehydrate, it will be like very dry, huh? really dry. And maybe after two, three months, you can again hydrate it and eat, and eat it again, because it will, it, it, it will not be bad. Now, uh, maybe the experiment will not work always, huh? so be careful. <laughs> but... Uh, 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 if, if you do the experiment, you will see that uh, in most cases it will work. Another effect, it's uh, improving coherence. So that's something else than harmonization. Uh, there's a little, uh, there, there are similarities. Uh, it's difficult to explain the difference, but it's, it's different. Uh, coherence, it's like you have a, a spider web and when the energies are not coherent then the spider web will be chaotic if you have a room and uh, there is a lot of electromagnetic pollution and you have a spider web uh, uh, or a spider making his web you will see that the web will be a lot of uh, uh, there will be a lot of chaos inside it will not be very it will not be really beautiful it will be like a, a, it will it will not have much uh, symmetry symmetry and with the pyramid it will improve coherence and you will have a lot more 
symmetry in the, in the spider web, for example. And uh, uh, an, uh, an anecdote, uh, my, my daughter um, discovered that the spiders really like to uh, make their web in the pyramid. And then she invented the, uh, the, um, like the, the spider web trap in a pyramid. You, you put a little pyramid in the corner of your room and the, in the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the ceiling and on a little wire. <laughs> and, uh, and then the spider will make his web inside. And then you take the, the spider out. You just take the pyramid <laughs> and, and you put the spider in, in, your, garden, in your garden, for example. <laughs> That, that that's an idea of my daughter and she was like uh, six years old or five years old when she she told me this <laughs> but that's a good idea interesting so uh, a fourth ef effect is amplifying intentions so that's also very interesting so if you have good intentions well when you use a pyramid for example, you want to increase um, germination of your seeds. Well, then you will put your seeds in the pyramid and you have a certain intention when you use it and your intention will, have, uh, will be like amplified. If you have a bad intention, uh, an example, I want to stop uh, germination of, of seeds. Well, then it will amplify also uh, your bad intention. So, uh, that, so then you will have uh, the opposite effect. So you, you can, and the pyramid is like a tool. Huh? You can use, it's like a knife, for example. You can use it uh, to cut uh, a dessert or a slice of bread, or you can make war with it. And so you, you can do good things or bad things. Well, with the pyramid, that's why also in uh, esoteric, uh, 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 um, uh, uh, groups or, or in bad groups also they use also pyramids because you, you can use it also in a bad way it, it, and in a good way so uh, we, we are here all together to use it in a good way yeah? but it's, it will amplify the intentions so if you have good intentions it will amplify them if you have bad intentions it will amplify them too so that's it. But if you have no intention, just very neutral, then uh, it will mostly increase the good effects. I never saw bad effects with uh, with the pyramid. Uh, if it's uh, if it's uh, used uh, correctly, uh, if it's not used correctly, uh, it's different. Uh, uh, but uh, we we will see that. Um, so that's very important because our intentions can also uh, reduce other effects huh? like harmonization, energizing, improving coherence. Our intention can like work against it or with it. That's um, uh, interesting too. Huh? Um, five transmuting so uh, i've told about this that the pyramid energy can help stimulate uh, uh, biological uh, transmutation or even kind of nuclear transmutation of uh, atoms <clears throat> les brown shows an experiment like this where he put a z z z zinc between between three pyramids and the zinc in two weeks is transformed in calcium uh, carbonate. A really a very strange experience. Huh? Uh, it is said in in uh, in in uh, yes uh, in um, in alchemy that they never found uh, gold in pyramids because when you put gold in a pyramid, some say that uh, the gold. Uh, like a, a coin, a gold coin, for example, or a little piece of gold. Well, uh, with time, there is like an oil uh, creating around or, or coming out of the gold and uh, like also 
Alan Wheat speaks about oils coming from rocks and things like that. Well, uh, you, you have a, a kind of oil coming out of that gold and that gold is transformed in that oil. And then when that oil evaporates, it's like a white powder after it, but there is no gold anymore. <laughs> it's uh, really strange. So don't put your gold in the pyramid. <laughs> Uh, uh, um, I just, uh, I don't know. I never did it. Uh, uh, I don't have gold to put in the pyramids, but to, to try it. Uh, but uh, so, um, but it's, it's very interesting uh, uh, to, to know that. Uh, so it's also a transforming tool of energies. When we speak that uh, a pyramid can increase or make electricity, uh, uh, well, um, uh, it's not that that electricity is appearing from nowhere. No, it's like the pyramid will collect certain energies and transform it in other energies. So it's like a, a solar panel that will collect uh, sunlight and transform it in, ele in electricity with, with the help of silicium crystals. Well, a pyramid is like a crystal too. So it will, it will also transform, um, not specially sunlight because it will also work in the dark, uh, uh, but it will transform certain energies in other energies that we can use like electricity. Uh, so uh, uh, now uh, the electrical culture we don't need specially uh, more electricity but we need uh, the good energy that improve plant growth uh, but uh, for the people that are interested in in uh, alternative energy research and a free energy research it's uh, really uh, in in my eyes uh, pyramid energy or the re exploring a pyramid um, um, experiments are really, or the pyramid is, is really one of the, the most interesting uh, techniques, I think, uh, to, to, uh, to um, uh, one of the most interesting techniques to g g g g generate electricity. Uh, the, the experiments of Les Brown showed, shows it also. He has a presentation called uh, Physics of Crystals that you can find of YouTube, on YouTube. It's like a two hour presentation. And, uh, and at the end, uh, he speaks about an experiment he did uh, that shows that a pyramid uh, generates a huge amount of electricity. Yeah. So um, if I conclude, you have harmonization, energizing, improving coherence, amplifying intentions, transmuting and transforming tool of energies. Now some effects. Uh, an example here, we have uh, an experiment done by John Burke, a very interesting guy. He had a book, uh, Seat of Knowledge, Stone of Plenty, a really uh, an amazing book, a very interesting book. And he, he went to different uh, stone structures and old stone structures like in, in Britannia, in England, in, in South America, like here, uh, he looked at the pyramid of, of Tikal in Guatemala. And if you compare it with the big pyramid in uh, Egypt, uh, well, this pyramid is like more uh, higher in proportions, in proportion. Um, in comparison with the base. Huh? So it's, it's what we call more a Nubian pyramid, a Nubian style pyramid. And, um, and on the top, you, you see like, uh, th there is like a stairway that goes to the top. And on the top, you have like a, a room uh, between two, uh, two big pillars or big rocks and, uh, and the top on it. Huh? Uh, or like a head on it. It's like you have those stones in Bretagne where you have a dolmens, a dolmens where you have two stones and, and one stone on the top. But here it's on the pyramid. It's even <laughs> on a higher place. So, and um, 
And then he put the seeds of uh, corn on top of that pyramid. And you see uh, the difference. Huh? He put uh, those seeds like around one hour on top of this pyramid. And then he prepared the germination of those of that of those uh, seeds. He put like I think forty seeds like this. And here you see the the difference uh, after eleven days. So it takes you eleven days to do the experiment again. <laughs> So it's not long if you want to to check it out. Uh, you see the the control group on top, where you have only a few corn seeds that uh, germinated, and on the bottom you see the seeds that were energized uh, during one hour on the pyramid, and after eleven days you see the germination and the growth that is a lot bigger and the growth is increased and also a lot more germination uh, this was uh, uh, now this is a when you see that effect it's a really huge effect now it will not always be the case like this uh, uh, i tell you it's it's uh, that's uh, an exceptional effect in a certain way uh, but I will explain you why. Um, this was done when there was a lot of elect electrical activity in the atmosphere, like a storm, a thunderstorm, for example. And then you have that kind of effect. Then even in one hour, you can really energize, boost your seeds uh, very quickly. But when he did the same experiment in a very calm weather, uh, Sunny weather, normal, uh, calm, no wind. Uh, well, then he had almost uh, no effect or a, a lot less. Uh, he had also good effects, but a lot less. So it shows that a pyramid is like an antenna. If you have a, a more electrical energy in the atmosphere, it's like with an atmospheric antenna. Uh, you remember I told you that the pyramid is like a synthesis of all the other techniques. Uh, well, you find back <laughs> a lot of effects like this. Well, it's like with the atmospheric antenna, when you have a lot of electricity in the air, it, it will collect a lot more electricity. It's logic than uh, when it's a very calm weather, when it's very calm weather. So here too, with the seats, uh, when you, we, we discovered now that uh, from John Burke, we discovered uh, the, 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 the earth weather, uh, if it's storm or calm weather, it's important, has a huge effect on the pyramid. But we discovered also uh, from other research that uh, the sunspot activity has a lot of effects. So when or, or sorry when we have um there was a phone at the same time sorry um, well when we have um uh um uh in our in our solar system um uh, like uh, like a magnetic uh, wind from the sun to the earth in direction of the earth when there is a large uh, sunspot activity that, that is directed to the earth it's like a, a, it creates like a solar wind with uh, a lot of magnetic energy that creates uh, on earth for example aurora borealis and uh, and and such things and so a lot of uh, electrical and magnetic energy that accumulated on the earth uh, well then the pyramid will also will also be uh, really increased in in their in 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 his effects an example is the experiment of charles hubbard that we will see on potato growth uh, he did really record yields of potatoes in 2011 when there was a high sunspot activity on earth and then he, his pyramid has a really a lot more effect than the other years uh, we will see that so 
So it become, you can see that it become complicated, but at the same time, it's simple. It's also interesting because we have uh, now that knowledge that we didn't ha have uh, 30 years ago. Uh, so now we can explain a little bit more why we can, we will have a lot more effect uh, today, for example, than tomorrow or than yesterday, because maybe today there is a lot more uh, thunder and sunspot activity or the two at the same time, then you have really a lot more effects. Huh? So we continue. Um, so w w when I came back from, from Canada in 2010 or 11, I, I did test with uh, with little copper pyramids uh, in copper rods, and I put this on uh, little uh, hatches, a uh, kind of ledges in my garden. And you see on the left, uh, uh, kind of little ledges uh, that is a lot bigger than the one on the right. So that was the effect of the pyramid. So that were my first uh, little experiments in my garden. So I was uh, rapidly convinced that it was very interesting. Yeah. So it, for the plants, it will increase plant growth, increase also the quality of the, the, the plants and the, the trees. It will increase the yields, uh, sometimes by two, three times more, sometimes even a lot more, uh, depends, uh, sometimes a lot less because it uh, the, like we have seen the pyramid is like an antenna so it depends on a lot of uh, uh, effects from uh, outside the pyramid too huh? so um, it will help a lot for seed energizing if there is if there would be only one application uh, to do with pyramids that i would advise it's uh, really to energize all your seeds that you use in the garden with the pyramid. Uh, that uh, if you have just a little pyramid, it, it, it's enough and it can make a huge difference in your uh, results and yields. If you just use a, a little a copper pyramid like, like uh, Gilbert Milne did, you can already have huge effects. Uh, so increasing germination, reduce of fertilizers and pesticides, yes. Because it's like you will increase the energy of your seeds and then it will follow the whole life of the plant. It's like uh, you will uh, it's like you you will wake up the 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 bigger potential of the plant. It will be a lot more disease resistant and also a lot more resistant against pests and, and uh, stresses and uh, climate stress, a drought or excess of water. It will really be a lot more, uh, uh, the, the plants will be a lot stronger. It, it can also make a difference like it increases the energy it can make the difference uh, between uh, a lettuce that that will be eaten by slugs or that will not be eaten that will just uh, pause by and say oh i don't eat him because he has too much energy <laughs> um so it can make huge difference mm. Another example testimonial that I like to share, it's, uh, it was a farmer from China that contacted me. And he, he built a, a big pyramid a greenhouse uh, as an example, like uh, Les Brown did too. Uh, Les Brown built even a lot bigger. He, he built a, a pyramid greenhouse that was uh, two levels high, as big as a house uh, of two levels. So uh, here it's... it's uh, it's it's more little but also quite big and that that farmer uh he did all that work in wood and then with plexiglass on the wood to make this greenhouse and then he he, he was searching because he didn't have any effects he didn't saw any effects of the pyramid on his plant so he was very disappointed and then he was searching why because he had read some books and he was very motivated and he didn't have effects. And then he contacted Mary Hardy 
and she uh, she put me in contact with uh, that farmer or that farmer with me and so that farmer contacted me and then I, I, I told him that he has to put a copper wire or tube uh, all around the pyramid edges and sides and he and 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 he 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 has he hadn't uh, uh, and and it was not the case. He he didn't do that. So then he did it, and he put then the the the, the next year uh, a, a copper like you see around his uh, wooden uh, pyramid. Uh, so he 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 held it the uh, the copper corners together. Uh, it was uh, like uh, not so nice uh, welded, but it worked. <laughs> So we will see, so that's his pyramid in his uh, field. And then um, he did experiments and then he began to see really amazing results. So it's, it shows you that to make it in copper is really important if you want to see effects. Huh? If you don't want to see effect, make it at any material you want, but I think we all want to see uh, results. So. Uh, if we look at uh, past experiments, uh, 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 we learn that it works the best uh, with copper. And so here you see on Chinese uh, cabbage on top, those are the Chinese cabbage uh, uh, that uh, where the seeds were uh, energized in the pyramid and the Chinese cabbage on the bottom uh, was the control group, for example. So that was after 20 days in the pyramid. Again, the same picture. Here uh, with numbers, now he wrote me an email with the results and with Google translation, we could, uh, uh, we, 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 we could communicate because I don't speak Chinese <laughs> and he don't speak French <laughs> or English. And see, here you see uh, on the picture on top right that on the left you see the Chinese cabbage from the control group and on the right uh, uh, that were energized in the pyramid. So it's a huge difference. Or on the picture left you see the three on the top were the control group and the three on the bottom were the ones energized in the pyramid. So it's a huge difference. So also important how to use it. If you want to make it work, you need to put the pyramid uh, horizontally. It needs to be horizontal. Huh? If you put it uh, like on a hill or something, it will not work. You need to put it horizontally uh, with the energies. And, um, and then also you need to orient it uh, uh, north, south, east, west. So each face, has to be uh, in in front of a in in, in front of a direction huh? like like you see on the picture. So this is a, a picture from the book of Les Brown uh, uh, that shows uh, how how to orient the pyramid. If you don't orient it, it will almost not work. It's like you take a bucket. Uh, uh, to collect the uh, rainwater. If you put your bucket on the side or upside down, you will not collect rainwater. Well, with the pyramids, it's the same. If you don't put it in the right direction with the Earth's magnetic field, uh, then it will not work. Or it will work maybe at a few percent of its uh, potential. And you feel it also with your hand if you if you put your hand above the pyramid and it's uh, well oriented, you will feel a lot more energy coming out of the pyramid. If you are uh, sensitive enough, huh? uh, you feel it too. Uh, so the building material copper, also the corners, if you make it in copper, the corners have to be uh, welded together in copper, not with brass or not with other metals. No, in copper too. And um, uh, uh, all the corners need to be a connection copper to copper. Uh, otherwise, it creates like uh, 
energetic imbalances or a, a disturbance in the energy and then it it can even uh, have harmful effects so um, as you can have uh, good effects you can also have bad effects if you don't use it uh, rightly yeah? mm. also good to know huh? about the construction and proportions uh, in the pyramid we find there are two angles that are very interesting that we uh, there are a lot of angles uh, you have uh, you have books uh, that speaks uh, uh, a lot about all all, all that kind of uh, mysteries but here what we will look at is the angle of 51 51 degrees uh, or 51.85 uh, degrees uh. Uh, so if it's if it's weighted in decimal, then it's fifty one point eighty five. If it's weighted in uh, really in degrees, then it's fifty one degree fifty one minutes. Uh, so that's the ideal angle. Now, if you look in books about the pyramids, you will see that all over the world it's around between fifty one fifty two degrees. So. Uh, uh they, they don't have always the precise size or sometimes it it uh, uh, uh their their sources are a little bit different from from one book to another but it's all always around those uh, those angles and then the so that's the angle between the face and the basis and then when you look at the angle between the edge and the and the base side then you have 42 degrees so uh, it's interesting you will see why the 42 and the 51 is interesting and then you have another uh, uh, proportion that is very interesting is the golden uh, ratio or the golden mean it's that's between it's the red part the apothemus um, uh, b it's uh, the golden mean multiplied by the the side uh, uh, um, a half of the side so it's c c multiplied by uh, the golden mean that is one point one point six or one eight um uh, you have uh the the b uh, length uh, the length of b so you you find again the golden mean or the golden ratio in the classic pyramid so that's that's the classic pyramid or what we call also the Gizeh or Cheops pyramid uh, like in Egypt find also almost all over the world we are speaking always a lot about the 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 reference of the Gizeh pyramid because is the pyramid that is the most uh, known where you have the most books of, around it uh, but uh, it's uh, we, we have to be really conscious that it's only one of the pyramids in the world uh, you have a lot of pyramids in the world and and, um, and it and the one in egypt it's not necessarily the most interesting one uh, but that's the most uh, touristic one <laughs> uh, um well they are all interesting yeah but we will see that um yeah so here you see uh the connection with the uh, natural rainbow uh, um, so um you will see in my presentation i don't speak about uh dowsing and uh and geobiology uh, with pyramids or uh, only a little bit because it's a whole other topic i want to approach pyramid energy in a very um, rational way or scientific way huh? and so uh, i want to show you first really the real effects and the real relations with uh, constants you can find in nature for example the 51 degrees corresponds with the angle between the rainbow between when you look at the rainbow and the horizon when you have uh, the sunlight uh, that will radiate to in in the in the raindrop 
and it will it will be reflected to your eye well that angle is uh, for the second rainbow it's 51 degrees and for the first rainbow it's 42 degrees so it's interesting that we have those two angles so 42 degrees and 51 degrees in the in the classic uh, Cheops pyramid uh, you have also the Nubian style there is 51 degrees in the top edge and uh, the top of the pyramid. Uh, so, but you don't have the 42 degrees in the Nubian style pyramid. In the Nubian style pyramid, that's uh, another proportion of pyramids that we find all over the world, uh, a little bit less than the classic pyramid, but uh, also almost all over the world. And you find also the golden ratio or golden mean between the side uh, multiplied by the golden ratio give you the edge from the corner to the top. Uh, so it's uh, you find also and, and that's why we call this pyramid the golden mean pyramid or the golden ratio pyramid. Uh, well, you see, you find also back uh, those natural uh, constants. Uh, uh, uh like in the in the, uh, the the relation with the rainbow interesting to see also a rainbow has all those colors the seven colors of the rainbow um that correspond to with white light when you you put white light through a prism a white light is the is the combination of those seven colors huh? If you take out one color, it's not a white light anymore. It, it will be a colored light. Huh? So uh, if you have like a white light where you have uh, uh, all the frequencies, then you have all those colors like in the rainbow. Well, uh, a pyramid, it's like uh, an energy transmitter collector of kind of, uh, I would say, white light but it's not white light but it's like it will create a broadband frequency spectrum that will be uh, positive uh, for for all life uh, because if you just put a on one kind of light or one sort of light you create imbalance because in nature you need mostly the whole spectrum uh, it's like a white sound when uh, you have a waterfall, you have a white sound with a lot of frequencies that are positive for life. Well, here you have a white light and a pyramid may be a kind of uh, white uh, kind of energy in a certain way. Um, it creates light uh, in a certain way also, uh, a pyramid. And that's uh, that's similar with the Lakovsky coil effect because the the idea of a Lakovsky coil uh, that we have seen in another presentation is to create a broadband frequency spectrum that when the plants need a certain frequency they will from from uh, that energy field uh, from the broadband frequency spectrum. Well, probably a pyramid works a little bit uh, similar with this. You see also the relation with the uh, water, with, with water uh, uh, in the rainbow and the angle. So it's like a pyramid. It's closely related with the water. The 51 degrees, it's also the angle you find back in the round tower. And here we see then the relation with the round towers. So we have seen already a relation with the Lakovsky coil, relation with the round tower, because you have the 51 degrees of the most of the round towers here, the top is on 51 degrees. So it's not by hazard. And also with the water, because the round towers work the best when you put it on the water. If you have a, a, a source or a, 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 yes, a, a, a spring, or uh, in the soil, um, or you can find with rods uh, where you have a water energy. Uh, you can find this with dowsing too, uh, with rods. 
uh, well, uh, if you put the pyramid on those places or the round tower, it will work a lot better too. Uh, 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 so that's also interesting. So we have a relation with frequencies, with uh, water. So, and that's, that's quite um, scientific. Huh? It's, it's not esoteric stuff. Huh? It's really a science. You can really measure this. Huh? Mm. So we continue. Um, yeah. Here, that's a picture. That is a picture from the book of Les Brown, uh, where he shows uh, where you have the most energy. So it's not like the people think at one third of the height. That is all height. This is only with the Cheops pyramid in Egypt that you have a room inside. But the most uh, pyramids in the world don't have rooms inside. They are like plain, and you have like a, a, a plateau on the top of it, where and a stairway to the top, like we have seen the pyramid of Tikal in Guatemala. Now, the the Giza pyramid is is a uh, Giza pyramid or or, or Cheops pyramid is is very interesting with that room too, because when you go in the pyramid in that room the sarcophagus is made of granite that is very paramagnetic and on top of the granite you have layers like a, a tower of layers of granite and the and the other part of the pyramid is made of uh, limestone so it's like you have a, a tower of paramagnetic rock inside the pyramid uh, so you see uh, a relation again with the round towers of Ireland or the paramagnetic round towers and the pyramids. And also other interesting facts. I met uh, uh, one day in 2012 at the Conf Eternal Knowledge Conference in uh, England. Um, very interesting uh, uh, co uh, conference. And uh, there I met John Stuart Wright. It's a, a, a it's a specialist about cymatics. So cymatics is the science where they play with uh, frequencies on uh, water, and they and they see they see certain ge ge geometric forms appearing with certain frequencies, with certain sound frequencies. And he, he is a specialist about sound frequencies and research about this. And he went in the in the in the king's chamber of the big pyramid with his uh, with his oscilloscopes and uh, frequency generators and, and measurement devices. And he measured that there is um, a resonant frequency with 432 hertz. Hertz, uh, for 432 hertz, maybe we have already speak, uh, speak about this. And this is also related with the water and also with the natural energies. It's very powerful. Uh, um, uh, you can see that in my presentation about the influence on sounds on plant growth. So you see again, an, uh, a relation even with sound uh, so a pyramid has relations really with a lot of uh, a lot of uh, electroculture techniques uh, it's really amazing and so uh, les brown he he observed or he discovered that you have the most energy in the in the edges and the corners and on the top that's really uh, i advise you if you have just a few seats you put them on the top or or in the edges and there you have a really like a, maybe a two three four or ten times more energy than uh, uh, everywhere else in the pyramid huh? uh, the pyramid has really a local energy field mostly yeah? or i speak about the energy field that really has effects on plant growth. Huh? Uh, you can feel the energy may be a lot in a, in a bigger area, but the effect on plant growth is very local. Huh? Uh, that is uh, uh, materialized or, or um, uh, limited uh, to, the, to, to the surface of the pyramid. 
there was one day I had not enough uh, copper uh, tubes and then I assembled a pyramid with copper and aluminium. I put potatoes. This was in uh, maybe in 2012 or 13 or something. And uh, this was a very bad idea. Uh, so I, I can, um, I can uh, uh, confirm that it's not good to combine different materials because then I had like uh, maybe 30% less yield and less growth <laughs> with uh, the, the potatoes uh, energized or influenced by the bad pyramid. So when you use different materials, it's really a bad idea. It's better not to use at all then or you or really uh, make a pyramid in the, in the same material. Right? It's very important. Also important is that the pyramid uh, corners of the base has to be connected also. It's not just I make uh, the edges that go to the top and it's finished. No, you also need to collect to connect the corners on the on the floor uh, the, uh, on the base. The, this is also very important to make it work. Otherwise, it makes also bad energies. Uh, if if you don't make a base on 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 the floor, then um, it will. Add, so so the square. Uh, then uh, it, it has also bad effects on plant growth. Huh? So uh, if you want to have good effects, you have to make it uh, uh, in the good way. Also an application that is very powerful, um, it's to energize basalt with pyramid energy. Uh, we, we have discovered, are we, uh, I, I think <laughs> I, I was the, the first one to begin to do that, I think. Uh, it's that uh, I, I'm not the first one that energized things in pyramids, huh? but uh, I, I, I discovered that basalt compared with other materials is like a, a storage battery of uh, pyramid energy. It really works very well to store and to accumulate uh, pyramid energy. Um, so it's interesting because basalt is made mostly of uh, of uh, of silicium oxides and iron oxides and uh, different other uh, uh, elements. But you have the silicium um, uh, crystals that will maybe resonate more with cosmic energies, and then you have the paramagnetic. Uh, particles of the basalt that will resonate more with uh, with uh, earth magnetic energies with low frequency so with really earth energy so and uh, the pyramid will amplify all those energies so it's like basalt has a large broad spectrum uh, effect and a broad spectrum uh, storage capacity uh, it's not uh, it will not store only uh, high frequencies that will also store uh, low frequency energies. So it will store all kinds of energies. And uh, what we want to get, it's a holistic, a holistic approach and a holistic influence, uh, influence to bring harmony and, uh, and a lot of vital energy. And the question that comes uh, back uh, regularly is, how, yes, I cannot put a pyramid in my wall field. Uh, it would need a pyramid of 100 meters large or something like this. So uh, how can I use a pyramid? Well, if you want to, uh, uh, if you want to spread pyramid energy in your wall fields uh, or your wall garden, it's possible like this. You put uh, like a quartz sand, or you can use other sands also. Or you can use a basalt, it will even work better. And, uh, and just uh, put it in the pyramid, it will store that energy and then you spread the basalt. Even, e even if it's a little bit, uh, it's really energetic, it's like a radiation. Uh, uh, you, you just spread a little bit uh, to the plants you want to, to increase their life force. Huh? So 
if you don't want to increase the life force of your wheat, you don't do put it on your wheat. Uh, if you want, you <laughs> you do like you want. So, but uh, uh, you you can choose which plants you want to stimulate like this also in your garden. And it's also very funny to do this with uh, the children because if you explain them, uh, they 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 will. Then you can. It's like. Um, uh it's like a, a play uh you you take uh, a, a, some basalts that you have put in the pyramid you you take it out and you you spread just a little bit to the plants they like or to the like uh, strawberries or raspberries or lettuce or whatever and but what i would recommend it's not to put on the leaves you just put on the soil around the plants this works very well if you put the basalt directly on the leaves, that's not so good because basalt is very alkaline and then it will sometimes like burn or also with the sunlight and the silicium, it, 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 can, uh, it can be too much energy locally. Huh? So it's uh, done, it, it will like uh, burn. Um, <clears throat> Uh, it will like making burning spots on the leaves, so you don't you don't uh, want that. So you put the basalt on the soil around the plant, and this works very well for the plant. Also, again, slugs. I did the the experiment this year. I planted some cabbages, sunflowers, uh, corn in my garden uh, in little plants, and. Uh, I saw the first time I planted the cabbages, uh, uh, I saw in the evening the slugs like going right through, uh, right in the direction of the of the cabbage. And then I, I, I put some basalt around my plant, but just a little bit, just uh, like a, a piece, uh, like you put some salt or so, something like this. I just put some. Uh, pyramid energized basalt around my plants and they were not uh, eaten by uh, the slugs and I have I can say you I have a lot of slugs in my garden but I don't have problems with them uh, the, this year it's a fantastic year because I live in harmony with the slugs <laughs> I don't have really problems with the slugs this year <laughs> So, uh, so I cannot be angry at them this year. <laughs> but uh, it's not always the case. Huh? But uh, it seems to work very well with uh, pyramid energy like this uh, to increase the energy of your plants. Uh, here an example. That was one of the first uh, experiments. Uh, it was with a neighbor. Uh, he was complaining that he has a very bad uh, growth in his garden. And then I give him some basalt that was energized in the pyramid. And here you see on beans on the, on the picture on the bottom. Uh, you see two rows beans on the left. That was the control group with his uh, normal soil. It was a very good soil, and, and he put a lot of um, manure from a, a neighboring uh, farm. And, uh, and he didn't understand because he put so much manure every year in his soil, and it didn't grow well. And with basalt, you see on the white, uh, two rows of beans with a lot better germination and a lot bigger growth. Huh? You, you see uh, on those two pictures on the bottom. And also on the carrots, on the carrots, you see also uh, uh, the two rows uh, with the basalt had huge, uh, a lot more uh, growth, uh, a lot more green and germination than the two rows uh, on the white. And, and he put there approximately one kilo a square meter. Uh, it's quite a lot. Now, in the garden, you can do that if you have uh, a if you find uh, a, a source of basalt uh, close or uh, then you can do that easily now if you don't have much basalt you can also have already interesting effects with a lot less huh? 
if it's just for pyramid energy, you don't need one kilo a square meter. You just put uh, like uh, like a little bit, ju 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 just spread like uh, a handful like this in your garden, like uh, maybe 10 grams uh, a square meter is maybe enough. It, you really don't need enough. Uh, it, you, know, the, you, you really don't need much to spread the pyramid energy uh, um, it's not about um, it's not about the quantity it's more the quality of the energy uh, yeah. so pyramids uh, effect common, po common points with other systems uh, so we have already seen some common points so we have uh, the effect like the round towers. Uh, it will also amplify the Schumann waves. There were experiments where they put people in a pyramid and they recorded their brainwave activity. And when uh, and then they observed that uh, we have uh, an increased uh, uh, brainwave activity at the Schumann frequency. So very uh, well, 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 when we go in the pyramid, so that's really very interesting. And uh, uh, so we have we have seen already that Schumann frequencies are also very important for plant growth and health. So a pyramid will help uh, to do that. Uh, also, you have common effects with the atmospheric antenna. You have the point effect. It will generate electrons all around. It will uh, connect the Earth energy with the cosmic or with the atmospheric electricity with, uh, with the sky energies. Uh, you will have also kind of parasol effect and also electroosmosis. It will attract uh, water. It will attract the water from the, the soil, but also from the sky in a certain way, but mainly from the soil. Uh, you will see that if you put a copper pyramid in the garden and uh, it, it rains, you will see that uh, the, the earth will stay longer wet under the pyramid than, than, um, than, uh, uh, than uh, be, 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 beside it and uh, that then uh, on the side of it so uh, you will see that the water will uh, th that the uh, earth will stay longer time wet uh, it's like the rain uh, doesn't evaporate as as quick in the pyramid at or well, it's more that the 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 water will be attracted from deep in the soil to the surface in the pyramid there is even an anecdote of an American that built a big pyramid house in concrete. And he observed in the center, when he finished to build his house, he observed in the center of his house a lot of moisture. And then there was even a well uh, appearing of, of water. And then, he, <laughs> and then he made a pound in the middle of his house <laughs> with the water that coming to the surface from deep underground. And it was in the middle of his house, uh, so it's uh, that that's that electroosmosis effect of the pyramid, like we find also around the atmospheric antenna. And then you have also the effect of the magnetic antenna. It will be like an antenna with the Earth magnetic field. So that's why we have to uh, orient it also uh, south to north uh, with the Earth magnetic field. Mm. So the pyramid will be in resonance with uh, Schumann waves. So it's with the energy from uh, thunder or from storms, uh, the, the electrical energy uh, of the atmosphere and also with the Earth magnetic energy of, the atmos uh, of, of our planet Earth. And those energies are closely influenced by sunspot activity so i would put uh, it would be good that i put an image of the sun also on that picture <laughs> uh, to to um, to make it more complete and not only sunspot activity but only also the the moon cycle the influence of the moon uh, 
in uh, biodynamic farming and uh, approaches, uh, they look a lot about the at the moon cycle and the influence of the moon on plant growth. Well, in the pyramid, it will be amplified. So there are like one or two days or a few hours a day, uh, one or two days in a month where you have a lot of bad energies from the moon. Well, in the pyramid, it will be then a bad time to energize seeds because then it will have bad effects. I, I have a confirmation of this uh, with uh, one of my students our participants to my workshops that did a lot of experiments with seeds and when he energized it at, at that time uh, 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 on the bad day of the moon cycle he had really bad effects huh? um, so it's also interesting to know so it's all always good to write down the the dates when you use a pyramid uh, to energize your seeds because uh, uh, you will have sometimes really huge effects and some other times less effects. And so you can come back to your agenda and look, ah, yes, but that day there was a lot of sunspot activity or there was that moon cycle or that, uh, or that uh, situation or storm or weather. It's good to, to, to observe and to write this down uh, to, to gain more knowledge and experience. Here's some, uh, some testimonials on, uh, from farmers in, in France with who I work. Um, in France, they are already since uh, 2012 or, or, or a little bit before. I have now hundreds of farmers uh, in my uh, customers that use pyramids uh, to energize their seeds. Uh, uh, and here you see the effects. This is on uh, wheat, for example, on wheat grains. You see uh, on the left the control germination group, the control group, and on the right the ones that were energized under a big pyramid of around four meters uh, square um, uh, compared with the control group. You see a, a bigger germination. Mm. So they do that mostly in their barn because it's a discreet. Farmers like to be discreet. <laughs> And so they do that, like you see, they have huge barns and then they can put this on the soil like this and put their seeds uh, under it. You can also put a big bags or your bags directly under the pyramid. Huh? You, you don't need to, to put the seeds out of the bag. You can also let them in the bag and put the bags uh, under the pyramid. Here again, a picture on soybeans and on uh, alfalfa or, or another um, rapeseed. Ah, yes, it's rapeseed. Um, also a big difference uh, with uh, pyramid energy uh, also for germination. Here on sunflowers, it works very good. Um, that's a testimony. This is a testimonial from my uh, garden in around uh, yes, uh, at ten years ago, and he used. There were two little sunflowers uh, germinating, and on one I put a copper rod pyramid, and on the other not. So the one that was close to I, I put that uh, pyramid. And that sunflower began to grow a lot quicker than the other. Uh, they were the same age, and uh, and you see a huge difference. Huh? Um, it's also interesting to see that it, it grew big, close to the rhubarb. Huh? So rhubarb and the sunflower uh, seems to like each other <laughs> and uh, to grow well uh, together. It's also um, in the... How to say that uh, it, it's 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 a paradox because uh, rhubarb needs a lot of energy from the soil and sunflowers too. So and but they grow well together. So you see that in 
in agronomy, there are a lot of uh, uh, paradox uh, things that you would think would not grow well together and uh, that in reality uh, grow well together. Also potatoes and sunflowers uh, grow quite uh, very well together too. <clears throat> this was in a cornfield. Uh, this was from a customer that uh, a farmer uh, uh, that was in organic farming and um, and uh, uh, at, and and she she had very bad uh, yields since ten years on her corn, and uh, I advised her to put the corn in the in the pyramid before seeding, and she did that, and she like uh, doubled her yields, and then she she has put the first year the corn two days in the pyramid. Uh, only two days and she had already double yield and then the year after she put the corn like a whole month a whole moon cycle uh, quite a, almost a whole month in the pyramid and uh, and then she had and and she also visualized by uh, her intention and by prayers a pyramid all over her field uh, in her wall field uh, so that was uh, several hectares big. And, um, and then she had even more, they had like three to four, uh, uh, I would say uh, three times or even more yield than uh, before. And she had like two to four years uh, of uh, corn on each stalk, on each uh, maize uh, plant, uh, and in comparison uh, with uh, only one to two uh, uh, years. Huh? So it was really a, a big effect. And also what, what uh, I found really amazing when I went there to, 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 to look at her uh, huge results, is that when I came uh, close to the field, it was really smelling very good corn. It was really smelling uh, the smell of corn. That when you go to conventional uh, corn fields uh, where they use a lot of pesticides, it doesn't smell corn anymore. It smells like uh, pesticides, chemicals. Uh, you, you, you don't like that, you don't want that. Well, uh, in that field, it was really smelling uh, really very good uh, corn. And um, what is also interesting is that the, 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 that farmer, uh, that, 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 that woman that contacted me in the beginning, she was like really desperate the, the first time because it was like since 10 years that she was not able to grow a good yield of corn and she did all her best to do it but uh, it didn't uh, it was not successful and she was thinking that it was the quality of her soil that was very bad and things like that comparison with uh, neighbors and and conventional farmers around and the conventional farmers were not uh, were like laughing at her uh, or that was doing organic and with very bad results and then it was after uh, the pyramid use, it was the opposite. She had a lot bigger results than in conventional farming with uh, pesticides and, and chemical fertilizers. So with, with just the use of the pyramid. Huh? So it shows that we can have really uh, increased yields and really amazing results with uh, the use of electroculture techniques in organic farming and have really uh, even a lot better results than in conventional farming. So why, why would we continue to do conventional farming uh, if you know that, if you have those results? Uh, so it's just, uh, it's just uh, logic. There are also pyramids that were discovered in 2005 in ex-Yugoslavia in Europe. And if you look at the image on the on uh, here on the slide, you see the size in the middle of the pyramid of the sun that is really a lot bigger even than the pyramid of Egypt uh, of the biggest pyramid in Egypt. You you can uh, imagine uh, the size, 
Now those pyramids in um, in Europe and Yugoslavia or uh, in ex Yugoslavia are uh, pyramids that are like uh, part of the mountains that were uh, modified uh, to a pyramid. It's not really a pyramid built from from the base to the top. It's we it's like uh, the mountains that were uh, changed. Uh, to be oriented uh, north south and to become a pyramid uh, it's it's um, it's it's quite strange uh, but uh, there are really also all those effects like you see with the other pyramids and close in the woods you find uh, like a pillar like you see on the left uh, with uh, carvings on the stone of spirals. Uh, this makes us think about uh, the, the effects of spirals. And also on top, you see like a pyramid of the, uh, on the pillar with a ball on the top of it. And now it showed in science also uh, that the antenna effect of a pyramid is amplified also when you put a, a ball structure on, on top of it. Uh, uh, also, Nikola Tesla discovered this for, for, for lighting rods, that it works even better with a ball uh, with spheres on top of it in plates in, uh, in combination with uh, points or, or, or straight lines. Uh. I, I, I told already this uh, in the presentation about the atmospheric antennas is that uh, spheres have also very interesting effects as antennas uh, on even on atmospheric antennas hmm. here you see again the image of that pillar and and when i saw the, this uh, pillar it's called the olovo uh, obelisk or something like this um uh, I found this even more mysterious and interesting than the pyramids. Uh, it's also a kind of pyramid. It makes us think also about the um, uh, a tower of a church, for example. It's also square, and then you have kind of uh, the roof. It's like a pyramid, and also mostly uh, spheres or ball structures on top of it. It's like it creates like a storage battery or or, or a capacitor uh, those spheres uh, like uh, nikola tesla explains it too tesla was coming from uh, yugoslavia origin it was a serp i think uh, originally in 2012 uh, before i did my presentation in um in uh, Guelph again uh, in the beginning of February 2012. Well, at the end of January, I was in uh, Sydney in Australia. And uh, then I visited uh, the botanical garden and I was uh, uh, astonished to discover that there was also, I didn't know that before going there, but I was astonished to discover there was a huge glass pyramid in the botanic garden. And they put, it's really an amazing botanic garden because they put also uh, classic music all over that garden. So it's very, and uh, it's really an amazing garden. Um, and uh, so I, I went to visit that garden uh, to, to explain you the anecdote. When I was uh, in Sydney, it was because there was a telecom company uh, that invited me to uh, explain to, um, to an apple uh, orchard, a farmer, uh, how to grow apples with music and they wanted to make apple juice to sell on festivals <laughs> on music festivals they wanted to sell uh, that telecom company wanted to to promote um, a platform of music uh, sold by internet or on, on the, the phones uh, and they wanted to promote it uh, through um, through a whole campaign of selling apple juice uh, uh, grown with music. And so they invited me to explain uh, uh, how uh, to grow apples with music. And when I went there, it was in January and uh, in France, it's winter time. And so 
uh, I was not very used to the sun. And so when I went in Australia, it was summertime and the sun in Australia is very, um, very intense. Huh? It's really, and so the first day I, I had a whole red skin, I was like burnt and then I needed uh, to put something uh, to, to heal my red skin. And then I wanted to go to the botanic garden to find aloe vera to help, <laughs> to help uh, my red skin. And so I discovered that pyramid. Uh, so it was not by hazard <laughs> that uh, God uh, uh, or the sun uh, made me uh, uh, red skin. And so uh, to come again to the pyramid, I, make a, I made a picture that you see on the bottom that this was a picture made just with my phone. Huh? And when you look at the picture more closely, you see that there is like a sphere on, on top of the pyramid. It's like there is a sphere structure. That's me, me a lightning phenomenon or something. But I, saw, I, I discovered this only when I was at a hotel in the evening. I was looking at my pictures and uh, I saw, whoa, that's strange. <laughs> and so then I put this in a, in a filter of um, an, an application um, uh, uh, created by uh, Harry Oldfield, an, another inventor. And uh, he, he, he made applications to analyze light and to make uh, visible, uh, invisible energies all around us. And then you could see even better that sphere effect on the pyramid, like you see. Huh? Uh, so uh, it was really a sphere that was really uh, a real effect uh, of the pyramid. So when we see those spheres or those ball structures on top of churches. And, and it's really an energy that is, uh, that is real. It's, it's not just uh, to make it nice or beautiful. It's really a an, an, uh, kind of energy that is there for real. And uh, like you see on that image. So that can give ideas to, to, to improve our atmospheric antennas or uh, round tower. Uh, my, my daughter, she, she made like a ball like this, like you see on the round tower. And it, it seems uh, to work quite good. Huh? She, she did that um, two, two, two weeks ago <laughs> at the workshop. Um, so um, Harry Oldfield, he discovered, uh, he made or he invented the 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 application that that he called the new energy vision, NEV, uh, the new energy vision. If you want to look on the internet, he has also presentations on YouTube uh, at uh, that he did at Glastonbury that are very interesting about the invisible energies around. Uh, very, very interesting. So now Harry Oldfield, he was quite old he died a few years ago now, but uh, I'm, I was very lucky to meet him uh, also in the past. So here we spoke already about this, uh, the, the pyramid is in resonance with um, or influenced by the solar activity. So when you will have more sunspot activity, you will have more pyramid energy, uh, a lot more. You can, you can follow the sunspot activity like you can follow uh, the moon cycle or like you can follow the weather. The weather. You have uh, applications that you can download for your phone that are called like uh, solar uh, monitor solar monitor or space weather or uh, you, you, you have different applications where you can follow the sunspot activity and then you can have alerts when you have high sunspot activity then then uh, you know it in advance and um, or you know it the same day and then you can rapidly put your water or seeds in the pyramid uh, before seeding to have more effect you will also discover uh, I, I, I observed this with myself that 
when there is high sunspot activity uh, or also the days where I have the most uh, imagination and, 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 and creativity and good ideas. Uh, a lot of inventors, inventions or, or really inventions that make a big difference in our world were made during high sunspot activity or, or high sunspot activity years, huh? because it's like cycles of seven years, 21 years, uh, uh, or sunspot activity cycles too. Um, sunspot activity, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's predictable partly, but not completely. There are sunspots that always come back in a regular uh, cycle, and then you have also unexpected sunspots. So that's also interesting because um, uh, you have almost every month uh, sunspot activity. Yeah? It's quite regularly, yeah? but uh, uh, there are years with a lot more and years with a lot less. You have the moon cycle also that influence pyramid energy, mostly in a bad way. The moon is like the reflection of sun energy. Sun energy is the good energy, and then the moon is like a reflection. Huh? So uh, uh, we need to be very careful with moon energy, but there are like uh, two days in the month where it's really bad, and then it's better not to use a pyramid. Now, if you have like your seats uh, during a whole month in the pyramid, uh, it will also pass by the days of bad energies. But that's not that's not so bad. The, what is important is not to take out the seats at that moment, because if you take out the seats at that moment, it's like it will be like uh, imprinted in the seats. It's like uh, when you bo you you born uh, your birth, you have like uh, 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 or your, your, it's like a fingerprint of the energies of that moment. Uh, you are like uh, connected to the energy of the moment of your birth. Well. Uh, with, I believe that with the pyramid, when you take things out of the pyramid, it will it will be like influenced by the moment, the the energy at that moment that will follow uh, the the seed or, or the the living organism afterwards. So uh, so it's important to not uh, take out the seeds at that moment, or otherwise you take them out before and you put them again in the pyramid afterwards, if you want, or, 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 or you disconnect the pyramid, or you just let them in the pyramid, but take care then to, to take out the, the seeds uh, a day or two after, or, or longer time after. Um, in the pyramid, we also discovered that it's like uh, fluctuations. Uh, at the front, he put like an electronic circuit in the pyramid with a capacitor and coils. And he discovered that when he did show that the capacitor was like a battery was charging with uh, electrical energy. And when he discharged the capacitor, it recharges instantaneously again with electrical energy. Uh, so it's like a pump. It's, it's like it, uh, it recharges instantaneously with electrical energy. And then he discovered that there were moments where the electrical energy was low on the capacitor and other moments where it was high. It's like you have a battery that, ha that will have a that will be like 100% loaded at certain moments. And a few seconds later, it will be lower and then again higher and then again lower. It's like a cycle. But he could not discover uh, what was the reason of the cycle or what was the relation with what kind of energy, but it's something we can observe in the pyramid. So maybe it would be something to improve 
the understanding how to work with pyramid, uh, pyramids, because maybe if we put the seeds out when the energy is high, it will have more effect than we when we take the seeds out when the energy is low. Huh? And maybe we can make a measurement tool to measure this. Uh, it's just an idea for the moment, but it's something to, to explore. Uh, maybe it will also be related, uh, that's for sure, with planetary cycles too. Uh, the influence of the different planets like Mars, uh, Venus, uh, Saturn, um, well, the, those uh, uh, are existing planets that have a real influence also on plant growth and life on Earth. Also, day and night cycle. Maybe it's just something to 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 test. Huh? Maybe if we if we energize the seeds at night, it's maybe different than during the day. I don't know, but we have to. For the moment, I didn't do a kind of test like this, but it could be interesting to do that. Uh, you have the fluctuations of pyramid energy, like I told. And also the specific placement of a pyramid. Uh, it's like the round tower. If you put it on a water, on water lines, or um, uh, if you look with dowsing at certain energetic points, uh, it can also increase a lot uh, pyramid energy. Now, it's not absolutely necessary. Uh, if you put the pyramid uh, wherever you want, horizontally and in the right orientation, you will already have effects. Huh? Uh, but if you put it on, on the right uh, specific spots, it can, it can really uh, increase uh, the effect. Huh? So that's also good to know. I see there are a lot of comments. Huh? <laughs> there will be a lot of questions to answer. <laughs> so, um, other testimonial, it's uh, here on uh, pumpkins. I did a little test uh, in the pyramid. Uh, so I seeded some in my garden uh, uh, without pyramid and with pyramid. And the slugs uh, uh, were attracted first by the ones that were not in the pyramid. So there was only one survived. And, uh, and then you see also that uh, the growth was a lot better in the pyramid. Uh, the leaves uh, were a lot bigger. Uh, uh, more seeds survived uh, the, the slugs too. <laughs> and uh, so you see a huge difference. Uh, on the bottom, you see really the, the, the uh, on the left, the pumpkins without pyramid and on the right with uh, they were like a meter away or one meter and a half away from each other. Other uh, observation, uh, it's uh, or ID from Les Brown. It's it's uh, a pyramid plate, and uh, I I have the, uh, one original from Les Brown like this, and it's in my plan also to make uh, that. I I made already some uh, prototypes, but uh, I I'm improving it uh, right now, and um, it's to make that again, and also with cones. And you see with Kirlian photography that you have kind of energy radiating from the points of the pyramids. And so that's kind of pyramid plate like this. And he made a, a pyramid plate like this in a kind of plaster, in, in a plaster. And then he put also an aluminum plate on top of it. And he said that the aluminum, so it's, it's from Les Brown, huh? that the aluminum, if you use it alone, it has a bad effect on plant growth. But if you are on preservation of food, and because aluminum will like suck the, the vital energy. But when, when you will uh, charge the plate on the pyramid uh, plate, uh, then the aluminum plate will be like charged with pyramid energy, and then it has good effects until it's a uh, the dish charged uh, dish charged so uh that's interesting it's like a metal 
uh, absorbs uh, vital energy, but when it's uh, completely charged with vital energy, like, uh, like a battery, then it will radiate it again. And then when it's discharged, yeah, then you have again to charge it. It's like with the basalt in the pyramid. Like I told you, basalt is uh, also rich in metal, in, in uh, iron oxides. And so it's maybe one of the reasons that it also uh, can charge with that vital energy also. So very interesting. And here you see the experiment with the egg uh, on a plate, on the pyramid plate. Huh? Uh, uh, that's from the book of Les Brown. It's a guy from Canada that, um, that, uh, 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 that, that gave me that book um, uh, when I went there. That has an original uh, one of the books. It's Marcus Koning. It's, it's a Swiss guy. Uh, farmer installed in Canada, and uh, and he he he. Uh, uh, I'm very grateful uh, to him uh, to 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 have shown me that book. But you find that book, uh, a copy of it in PDF on the internet, very easy. You just uh, put a pyramid, uh, the pyramid Les Brown, and you find very easily the PDF or you on our group of uh, the course or also on my internet site. So we can, ah yes, um, other uh, uh, interesting effect. Uh, it's what we call the mummification. Well, people are always telling uh, in research about pyramids about mummification and they're all like afraid of that. But in reality, it's not really what it hap what what happens. It's in reality, it's look like it's just dehydration, and um, uh, but dehydration with high vital energy. So the the at the end you have like mummification. It's like the 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 living organism is dehydrated, but it doesn't rot. So it doesn't decay. If, if you would not have the pyramid energy, then, then it will rot more quickly than it dehydrates, you see? And then you don't have that mummification because you, you, uh, it will not dehydrate uh, quick enough and it will decay, it will rot. And in the pyramid, it will not decay, so it will just dehydrate with time, it's normal. And, and then uh, that's what we call a mummification. So it's not like some uh, would say that it, uh, that, increase, uh, that it would increase that energy. That's completely false. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't kill, it doesn't uh, increase that energy. It just increased life energy. And uh, with time, it's normal that you dehydrate or that a living organism dehydrates. It's normal. Uh, it's just the the it's just the water that evaporates. But uh, a proof that it's uh, really high in vital energy is that when you will use that dehydrated food, or or a food or living organisms that are like fruit that was stored in a pyramid, it will increase your energy. It you will have more energy. That you it will also help for health uh, issues or, or things like that, it will increase energy. If it was not good, it, it mm -hmm. would not do that effect. Uh, it would have a, a bad effect. It's like with the basalt, if the pyramid energy was not good and was um, uh, a, a kind of killing mummification energy, then it would not be good to put basalt to the plants that was stored uh, under the pyramid. So that's uh, important to to understand that effect, because in uh, in uh, in uh, yes, in in dowsing groups and things like that, or in old books about the mysteries of pyramid, they tend to to explain it uh, differently in the wrong way. That doesn't correspond with what we observe in reality. You see, or it's like misinterpretations. Huh? 
It's not because they found uh, that uh, a mouse in the pyramid that uh, the pyramid has killed the mouse. No, the mouse uh, just was lost in the pyramid. And uh, and uh, when he died, he didn't trot and he dehydrated. So it's normal that uh, you find a mummy, a, a, a mummy mouse <laughs> in the pyramid. Uh, 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 and it and like it doesn't decay, so you 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 see that the 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 mummies uh, stays in very good shape a very long time. Huh? Yeah, so it's it's uh, a good effect in a certain way. We see that also that was a science experiment with yogurt. Your yogurt. They put, uh, you have a good bacteria of the yogurt, uh, milk bacteria, lactic bacteria, and you have bad decay bacteria that will transform uh, and what cre will create uh, like uh, uh, fungus or whatever, or bad bacteria that will make bad smell. Well, when you put yogurt in a pyramid, the bad bacteria stop to develop, and when you put it out the pyramid, they they begin again to develop. They they observe this in science uh, studies. Uh, so it's very so, so th that's a kind of proof of this. And the and the good uh, lactic bacteria they continue to develop in the pyramid, but not the bad uh, decay bacteria. So th that was proven uh, in science. And then they, they, they conclude after that science article that maybe it would be good to make like uh, milk cans in a, in a pyramid form <laughs> to, to, cons to preserve the milk uh, more a uh, longer time. So it's quite interesting. Yeah. Here you see the first time I made a Nubian style pyramid and uh, my dog uh, was it? Uh, Erika, uh, she, she went to sit uh, close to my pyramid. It was like uh, the Sphinx <laughs> in uh, Egypt, uh, in, the, in the Sphinx position. Uh, very nice. It was a very nice dog too. Uh, so we already seen the the Nubian style pyramid and also uh, where we can find back the golden mean or golden ratio. Uh, so the edge, uh, what is on the image uh, D equals 1.618 uh, 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 equals the side A multiplied by uh, the golden ratio 1.618 equals the edge uh, the D. So uh, that's why we call it the Nubian or the golden ratio pyramid. Uh, there is also not to to mix it with another kind of pyramid that that some call also uh, golden ratio. Uh, uh, or Russian pyramid that is uh, a little bit different uh, proportion. Huh? Uh, uh, the, this is really a pyramid like you find back in Sudan or in the south of Egypt, um, where you find the Nubian. That's why we call it a Nubian, because the people that were living there were called uh, the, the Nubians. Uh, so here that's an image of the Nubian style pyramid uh, in the south of Egypt or in Sudan in Africa. And you see again in front of that pyramid, uh, if you compare it with the pyramid of Tikal in Guatemala, here you have again two pillars, but they are on the base. Uh, and with uh, a little room uh, in front or in between. Uh, and in the pyramid of Tikal, the, it's on the top, on the plateau, on the top of the pyramid. So there are there are always similarities, but it's like they use it uh, differently. It's like you have a phone, but the camera is positioned on another place on the phone, <laughs> or the 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 entrance or the room uh, to energize the seats is on a different position. Yeah, so. 
here on the right, you see a picture of a big pyramid that was built close to Moscow in Russia, uh, where they speak a lot about it in, on the internet. But that's another um, proportion. Huh? It's another experiment, uh, um, uh, but also with good effects on plan groups if we look at their experiments. Uh, but that's another proportion. Uh, I speak about uh, for the moment limits to the classic pyramid and the Nubian golden ratio pyramid, uh, like you, we see. Yeah. So this was an experiment on pumpkin seeds with the golden ratio pyramid. Uh, you see difference on the, that was my first experiment. Uh, on the left, you see uh, a little, little bit bigger growth uh, than on the right. Yeah. So the Nubian style pyramid has quite the same effects as the classic pyramid. But I would say my my uh, observation is that it will increase more cosmic energy compared with the classic pyramid. The classic pyramid, like Les Brown teaches, uh, is I think the 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 best pyramid to experiment with, to begin with. Uh, it's also the pyramid where we have the most uh, experience and testimonials uh, with it. Mm. Again, this was with the Nubian style pyramid or golden ratio pyramid on uh, in springtime in the garden. You see the plant on the left. It's like, uh, I don't know the name uh, in English, but it's like a little, it's like the same family of onions, leek, it's a, a plant you cut in pieces to put in the lettuce. <laughs> and the, on the right, you see that it grew, it grew a lot bigger uh, compared with the left. This is uh, pictures from uh, the book or, or the work of uh, Charles Hubbard. And he uh, experimented with the work of Les Brown. Huh? Uh, Charles Hubbard was also a Canadian guy in Nova Scotia. Uh, and uh, he was a farmer. He died a few years ago also. Um, I was also lucky to, to meet him. And um, he did a lot of experiments with pyramid, and we will see that. So he made a, py a little pyramid greenhouse around, like you see on the right. And he made also wooden pyramids, like you see on the bottom left. Uh, but also with uh, copper wire around the wood. So if you want to make a cheap pyramid, you can make in wood, and then you, you just put along the, the, the wooden edges just a copper wire, and you connect uh, the copper wire in each corner together. And then you have like a, a copper pyramid that is just uh, 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 sustained by a wooden pyramid. And this works very well too. Here you see from the book of Les Brown on the right, uh, Pelargonium or Geranium plants uh, from the pyramid a lot bigger than the testimonial plants on the left. The guy on the right is Les Brown. So that's the genius about pyramid energy on plant growth. On beans, again, you see the normal beans on top and uh, on the bottom, the beans that were grown uh, in the pyramids or influenced by the pyramid. This is the, the result of, of the greenhouse pyramid of um, uh, Charles Hubbard. And he every year planted uh, potatoes along the side of the pyramid, and he confirmed the effect like uh, like uh, Les Brown uh, observed that you have a lot more energy in the corners, and in the corners he he get like around uh, uh, along the side of the pyramid he get around. 80 mid-sized potatoes on each plant. 
So it's really a lot. Uh, normally you will get like five uh, to eight potatoes on each on each plant. And here he had 80 potatoes. And at the, and ah uh, yes, he, he had 40 potatoes. And at the corners, he had 80 potatoes. Uh, so it's really amazing. And in 2011, uh, there was a high sunspot activity that year. And um, I spoke about uh, my uh, meeting with uh, Charles Schubert to a friend that uh, make uh, videos. And, uh, and he and that guy, uh, his name is Patrick, he went to, uh, to visit Charles Hubert and he was able to film in uh, live uh, the yield of the, of the potato that year. And he measured, uh, he filmed, it's on YouTube, you can find it back. Uh, he measured 137 potatoes on one plant. So it was really a record. Uh, I, I never saw this with my own eyes. Uh, in my garden, I never had such big results. Uh, so uh, we, we, I don't know anybody else than Charles Hubert that had such big results. So we have we are all we all need to learn more and to improve until we get the same results as as him <laughs> and uh, all the people that uh, are explaining how to do but uh, doesn't show me results uh, i prefer to listen to charles hubert <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, we we need to listen to our teachers and if we can make better than our teachers then maybe we have discovered a little bit more <laughs> and uh, then it's also interesting so even myself i didn't have so much results but uh, it's i learned a lot from charles hubert and he is really uh, he was really an, am an, uh, an amazing guy very profound uh interesting uh, uh philosophy huh? uh interesting guy so we continue so that's from also from his garden uh, in the pyramid. Uh, you see the wire, you see the copper wire along the edges on this image. Uh, you see it good. Uh, so it's quite easy to make it like this. Uh, here is another testimonial from a guy from the south of France. You see on turnips, uh, different uh, left uh, without, right under the pyramid. You see on carrots too. Uh, yes, some will say, "Oh, I have bigger carrots." Yes, but if you put a pyramid, it will they will be even bigger. <laughs> so it, it you have to compare what what is comparable. You have to compare with and without. It's it's not about your garden and the other's garden. You have to compare in the same garden to 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 see the differences of the effect of the pyramid, for example. Also in radishes, you see the difference here. Here another example of uh, on potatoes in the south of France, where it's mostly very dry in summertime, um, and uh, for longer for long periods uh, compared to the north of France, uh, where it rains a lot more, uh, a lot less now than in the past, but uh, a lot more than in the south of France. Well, here you see this was a testimonial in 2014 uh, under a pyramid, copper pyramid of two meters by two meters. He, 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 Julien uh, uh, G uh, tells incredible growth. The green color was so intense. The plants are very strong, no disease, and generally yield up to 15 potatoes on each plant. Normally, he had around five potatoes. And when you look at the picture, you will see that the plants are really very green huh? very, uh, compared with the grass that is all yellowish all around. Uh, that, that's something you see in very dry places that uh, the, the plants will be a lot more better hydrated uh, under the pyramid. It's like they have access to more moisture and wet 
so uh, they stay uh, more green uh, even in dry uh, periods mm. so very interesting ah this is a testimonial but can i play it here no uh, but this is a testimonial i received from uh, from russia and um, uh, the guy it's a little video uh, but I cannot play it here, but he shows um, uh, uh, two two fields. I will explain what he shows. He shows two fields. Uh, one field is uh, um, a sunflower field that was energized under the pyramid, where the seeds were energized under the pyramid, and the other is a sunflower field without, and there is like a. D -d 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 double yield in the field uh, that was energized where the seeds were energized under the pyramid so it's something where they did already uh, uh, some research in russia and uh, that's also what we see also uh, with the farmers uh. so it's a really a very interesting technique very cheap technique too that can have really big results uh, also in farming uh, that's in my garden but in my garden there are a lot of uh, techniques combined so <laughs> it's not only pyramid energy but uh, uh, the most of my seeds uh, went uh, through also under a pyramid So if you want to build a pyramid, uh, just the basic uh, rule to observe, to, to get the right proportion, uh, uh, if you know that formula, you can build any pyramid you want, uh, uh, any size you want. Uh, so if it's a classic uh, pyramid or Cheops pyramid, you it's the side multiplied by the factor 0.2. 952 give you the edge uh, so or the edge equals 0.952 multiplied by the side and then you can then you have uh, 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 an example if you the side is one one multiplied by 0952 equals 0952 so then the edge you cut it at 0952 uh, an example if the side is 100 centimeters the edge will be 95.2 centimeters and if you want to make a golden mean pyramid or nubian style pyramid then the factor is the golden ratio it's 1.0 if you cut your edges and sides at, at those uh, lengths that you calculate then when you will assemble it will be automatically at the right angle and so it's uh, quite easy yeah so if you just uh, know this it makes it easy i make uh, i show on my site uh, different ways to make a pyramid and that's uh, one way i make it um, with a laser cutting uh, so that's my uh, most updated pyramid for the moment most perfect pyramid uh, in the angles and and um, and uh, materials so it's complete in copper like this you can find on my site it's like the luxury pyramid i would say <laughs> and then i have also so here again you 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 just have to assemble like you see on the image on the left you just put your tube around the the piece that comes out uh, of the corners uh, like you see on the image on the left and on the bottom left and you assemble like this a wall pyramid at uh, any size you want between uh, between one to uh, three to four meters uh, side if you want uh, you can make a big one to go inside uh, some sleep also inside or to make a big one for the garden the birds uh, very interesting to see in the garden that the wild animals the deers the birds uh, like really very much to go close or under the pyramids and even the birds on top of the 
pyramid huh, on the angle of the top. Uh, they like it very much. Here, uh, that's other style of uh, other way of making it uh, with a rivet or with uh, a bolt. Uh, you can make it flat, uh, pieces of tube flat, and then you just uh, bend it at the right angle and, uh, and connect it all together like this. That's a, a more cheap way to do it, and it works also very good. Huh? So uh, you can find it also on my internet site. Yeah. So in the beginning, I did, uh, so I inspired me, uh, I didn't, uh, uh, I inspired me from the work of Les Brown. Uh, he also distributed uh, pyramids in the past, and uh, uh, I was able to get uh, one prototype uh, or one original one, uh, like uh, like he built it in the past. And uh, I inspired me from this, and uh, also from um, from Gilbert Milne. <laughs> Yeah, so that's pyramids like uh, Gilbert Milne did, I think. Uh, so I I, I uh, did it with copper rods like this that I will pile together like this that you find also in on my internet site and that I make also sometimes with the students of the workshops. Uh, if you come, mostly the people go back at home with the pyramid. <laughs> When you go at my live workshops, you always go back at home with a lot of presents, pyramids, antennas. Uh, it can be different kind of, of uh, electroculture uh, antennas. Uh, so nobody uh, has an, ex an excuse to not uh, doing electroculture in their garden afterwards, <laughs> because they 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 go all uh, home with. Uh, electroculture material to um, to experiment with so we are already at the end huh? but there's still much to say but uh, it's it's already a big uh, presentation uh, for the, today uh, there are some books i would advise really that 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 um, learned me a lot about the real effects and signs uh, uh, behind pyramids, it's uh, the pyramid from Le, uh, the yes the book the pyramid from Les Brown. Uh, that's really a must read about the effects of pyramids on plant growth. Uh, and then you have also uh, Pyramid Power from Patrick Flanagan. He don't really speak about the effects. It's really interesting. It's 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 he is really a pioneer and a genius about uh, the effect of uh, pyramid energy too. Uh, also for the one that are interested in how pyramid works on a scientific basis and uh, also uh, com combined with electronics, uh, if you want to do uh, electrical generation. Uh, it, it would be a must read uh, the book Pyramid Power of Patrick Flanagan. And also the effect on health. It's also very interesting. And health, it's uh, also you can, uh, 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 you, you can um, understand that what will have good effects on uh, human health mostly has also good effects on plants. You have also the book that is more um, alternative or energetic, a Pyramid Energy, the Philosophy of God, the Science of Man from Mary Hardy, also very interesting. And you have the Secret Power, Power of Pyramids. It's an old book from the, um, I think also from the 70s or 80s, the Secret from Bill Chull and Ed Petit. And then I'm also preparing uh, a chapter or a book about uh, pyramid energy, uh, uh, like you see. So you can already find my book about basalt and paramagnetism in French, and it's uh, soon coming out also in English, where I show also the experiment that I showed you uh, with the pyramid energized basalt uh, <laughs> uh, on plants. 
So thank you very much. And uh, I, I hope it was again very interesting for you and that it, uh, it stimulates you to, to experiment with pyramids and to share all our observations and results and, and uh, something to do tomorrow or this afternoon. <laughs> Uh, and you will see quite quickly results. Huh? An example, if you have vegetables attacked by slugs, they are like surviving, put a pyramid on them, you will see huge uh, differences. They, they will grow back a lot more quicker than if you don't do it. Uh, uh, it can help really a lot to like uh, boost uh, the plants and increase their health uh, temporarily if, if it's needed. Thank you very much. I give you the word, uh, Angela.